Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at the NRA convention at the Ruger booth with my fellow Ruger ambassador and one of my most favorite humans, one of my best friends, one of my best everythings, this Jen O'Hara <laughs> from Girls With Guns Clothing and Team yes. Ruger. And um, ah, I just want to take a deep breath and just enjoy the fact that we're sitting here together and we're sitting and yes. we're not on our feet been on our feet all Amen. day for days it feels like literally and I have not shut up all day long and I <laughs> really I mean I like talking but holy smokes people have to hate me after this. well you did <laughs> like talking, talking podcast talking. podcast talking to people seminar yeah seminar was great by thank the way. you yeah I you and Maggie it. both showed up and mm-hmm. that was really great I, that's what I love about our team is like the team support that we mm-hmm. all give each other and we celebrate each other and encourage yes. each other and that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Well, it's always been like that. You know, that's the one thing about Ruger is it's really family oriented. Yes. So whether you're an ambassador or one of the guys on the sales floor, or part of our marketing team, or even um, our execs, they're all yeah. amazing. And it's always been like that. Well, it's nice now, too, because like your first couple of years, you're with... Um, a manufacturer, like you walk into a conference room and you're like, <coughs> I know, I agree. I <laughs> and then agree. you're like terrified. And now I'm like, oh, they're just, it's just the CEO, Chris Chloe. Right. He doesn't mind <laughs> if I walk in and grab my purse. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like everybody, it's, it's like literally like family. Well, like and you and I everybody. are kind of the oldies in the group. Um, you know, we weren't when not we first talking age. age okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, maybe. I mean, we're getting up there, yeah. but no, we. Um, They're I, like, yeah, we're gonna bring on a more junior staff, and we're like, what does wait, this mean? What? <laughs> it means we're getting older. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay. So, so I, I am, I am celebrating my ninth year in a row with Ruger, yeah. and being a part of their family, part of their team, and. Um, it's been such a journey. I started with them 11 years ago by going to a gun site event. I was invited to by Elaine Sandberg and she was doing the social media back then. And of course, imagine 11 years ago, yeah. social media was yeah. not what it is today. And you guys have to know, Elaine is like an older lady. She is the quietest, She's awesome. like meekest, sweetest lady, like wears her sweater around her shoulders and just... And she did social media. Like, oh, yeah. You're like looking at her. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> and not that I'm profiling people, but Elaine does not fit the social media profile. <laughs> right. Well, social media has evolved yeah, we so love Elaine. much. Oh, yeah. we do. We, we do. do. So she came and invited us. We went to this Ruger event. Um, that was back in the SR9 days. I yeah. had an SR9C. So then we... It was like a year later, um, became a part of the team. And at the time, Narissa and I had Universal Huntress. Yeah. That was our TV show. And we were on the Sportsman's Channel. And, um, yeah, it's just been kind of a journey. And they've stayed with me through all the changes yeah. and everything. It's been awesome. Well, I met Rob and um, our former uh, marketing like director, Carissa, at an NRA convention, it had to have been like 2014 or 2015. Mm-hmm. And I was here teaching um, as a pistol instructor with Shoot Like a Girl. And they have a big, huge trailer here and it's simulated. Um, they see, have it here this year. They have it here yeah. every year. So they have this great program where you can come in and shoot a, a, 
a real firearm, so a real pistol or an AR platform, and it has 80% of true recoil without actually a projectile being fired. And so for those people that are you know, wanting to learn the fit and, and right. functions of a firearm without without the, like, sometimes that there's a little bit of fear with, with the actual totally. firing process. And so it takes that out of it for you. And um, so I was a teacher for them and instructor for them. And Rob and Carissa, obviously, has been big supporters of, you know, safe firearms, um, mm-hmm. use and handling and education. And that's a great education program. And Rob and Carissa came through the trailer and... They're, like, asking questions, and I looked at them, and I'm like, oh, do you guys want to see our Rugers? And they're like, how do you know? And I'm like, well, hello, I'm not blind. You have a Ruger badge <laughs> on. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> so I inadvertently got their business card, and I did my normal me, and I started totally stalking them. Um, I got their email, and I started sending them my newsletter. Which and is awesome. Then eventually Chris is like, well, we'd really love to work with you. But I was hosting RMEF's TV show. Um, tea milk with Brandon Bates and I was like you know I don't really have like I don't know how, why you guys want me to work with you I don't even have a TV show you know like I'm just doing like this freelance thing and it was really odd and I was like I don't, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do but um, so I just kind of kept that in the back of my mind and like two years later I launched Pursue the Wild and I, I approached them and they were all in I had a contract on my computer within a week, I think, of telling so them. So you were at SHOT Show. I remember this. And we were friends not as close as we no, are well, now. No, we've gotten way closer. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, we're talking, that was a long time ago. Well, and we met at your first SHOT Show. Yes. Which, well, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that had to have been. A long time ago. 2011? Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing. A, yeah. It was a long time Around ago. Around-ish. But. We, it was probably 2016 or 17. It was whenever you yeah. came on with Ruger. And I remember you come in to Nerissa and I and asking us, because we'd been with them for two years yeah. at that point. And you were like, hey, you know, how is it? And I mean, it's been, it's been amazing. Family. Yeah. My first NRA convention I, I did officially on the Ruger team was probably the best NRA convention of my life. We that. had, you were here, Nerissa was here, our sister Morgan was here. Yes. And she played her guitar and had mm-hmm. a big speaker or she brought in a guitar player. Yep, she brought in a guitar yeah. player. We and set that up for music because we had done it the year before at our booth at the Girls with Guns booth. Yeah. And they were like, we need that. Yeah. So we brought so it we in. So we brought her Ruger. and she performed and we were, she was singing. We were dancing. Oh yeah. And we were dancing with kids, with kids <laughs> and it was just literally like the most magical, mm-hmm. it was like fun. it was un- like, and I was like, oh, I, this is home. This is yeah. my home. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been ever since. And of course you do an amazing job for Ruger and they're very lucky to have you. You've just been awesome. Thank you. And so are you. Oh, well, thank you. You know, we love their firearms. <laughs> and one of the things that I really have just come to love is just the different platforms that we have here and what's available and going through them and now adding in Marlin. Yeah. I mean, that's been really awesome. Huge. It has not stopped at the show. I don't no. think they've put down those guns. No. Not once. I mean. No. And honestly, the booth, I, I mean, <laughs> I can't stress enough, like, it's wall to shoulder wall. to shoulder here mm-hmm. all day long. Pretty much since the opening. Yeah. I mean, everybody just came straight here. And it just tells you the popularity and honestly, the quality mm-hmm. that Ruger produces because the people will tell you if your yeah. booth is empty, there's a reason. Yeah. But I, I mean, it's, it's never wall to wall. And not only that, Ruger is going to be celebrating 75 years uh, maybe next year even, I think. Um, and you don't stay in business for that long without incredible products and Mm -hmm. innovation and vision and also legacy. Right. And so they've done so much at really being a part of tradition, Mm -hmm. but innovating our future as well. So that's one of the things I love about shooting for Ruger and shooting Ruger firearms. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, what I love about them too is they're affordable. Absolutely. So it's not like, um, it's not like a firearm that everybody can't, aspire to owning and, mm-hmm. and own um, law-abiding citizens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they make firearms that's affordable for everybody. And if you want to be a competitive shooter, they make a firearm that's competitive. Right. Um, it's quality. It's accurate. And, and it's achievable for just people. Right. You know, and that's, and I, they make guns that are not just like boy or girl or male mm-hmm. or female. They're not gender-specific firearms. They're like, we make guns for people. 
to have these awesome features adjustability wise. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, you and I look at our little midget arm Tyrex. You, well, so. you're shorter than me. I know. Two inches shorter. And so, you know, I have just a really short length of pole. Yeah. And so we have the adjustable stocks. And the one thing I was going to mention is that I started from a 1022. That was my first Ruger. Yeah. And I mean, that's really standard for a lot of people or a lot of kids. Yeah. And um, moving up into right now, my go-to is and has been for years. I'm not going to lie. It is my favorite. I have gotten new firearms, but the Ruger American 7mm, mm -hmm. it's just flat shooting. It's yeah. reliable. It's the perfect gun for me. And I love it. Yeah. And so then I started really getting into handguns a lot more and the variety of what is coming out and what Ruger is bringing out. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do live in California. California. Uh, so I don't We don't really get judge her for that. No. I mean, we do. And we're all like, you should move <laughs> no. to a but free state. I always, <laughs> I always feel like if I move... It, you know, it's just going to, nobody's going to be there fighting. Like if we all move. So, and my family's there and I was raised on a ranch there, but I, I'm staying in she a fighting. She wants to make this, oh, I've, I've got a, a <laughs> set a flag and do whatever, but really it boils down to, it's her home. Yeah, it is. And it it's has been my whole life. Yeah. And being raised in Northern California on a ranch, um, up in what we like to call the state of Jefferson. The state of Jefferson is the place. Non-existent in <laughs> California. It still falls under California law. Unfortunately. <laughs> but in mm -hmm. her mind, it's a whole other world. It's it an, is. It's a mystical place that doesn't exist. <laughs> it is country. It is ag. It is farmland. Yeah, I it get is, it. It's well, amazing. and I was in the same state of Oregon, right. right? Like I lived in Prineville and it's country and it's ag and hunting and you know second amendment and i remember and when you told me you were moving i mean we were <laughs> run by i mean we, the the problem is, is uh, it's not a real it's a mystical place that doesn't exist i know because you still fall under those state laws right and fortunately and and with you know i don't want to get into politics right 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 but it was just better for me and my family to move yeah to a place that was you know but anyway you're in california yes. and so we're well, not judging her for yeah, that right now yeah. okay we that's are the whole point of this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm Wyoming. The winters are I great. I know. <laughs> that's the only that yeah, we do. I love our weather. It's like 75 back home right now. But anyways, moving and transitioning from um, like a 22 um, rifle to shooting my 7mm, and now with all the different handguns, self defense has become so huge. And mm -hmm. and I teach self-defense to women in terms of CCW and doing training and going through the motions of people getting their CCW permit in California. And yes, that is still allowed in California. It's just a lot of paperwork and training. It is. And, and But it is, if you are a resident of the state of California, there is an opportunity for Absolutely. you to get trained from someone like Jen and, and have yeah. that opportunity to be your own first responder. Right. And, and I think it's so important for me in my small little town, um, we have about a 45 minute response time. Mm -hmm. So... There's me and the girls. My husband works 12-hour days. He drives two. So we're home all day because I work from my home office. And it's me. Um, you know, we, we have some problems in California with our homeless situation, with people who have come on our properties. I carry on my property as well. So I'm she always... She had to, like, file, like, suit to get people cleared off of her property. Like, this is like was, a legal proceeding. Right. We won't get into it. Yeah, it was but right I mean, behind my property. It's like it's the world is becoming more unsafe that we live in. Right? It is, absolutely. Yeah. And so one of the things that we saw was people coming onto our property from a neighboring property. And yeah, I was um, like six months pregnant and I was waddling my butt in and I was on the front page of our newspaper multiple times in with the city council because um, that was part of the city's property and um, called the local news station. They came out twice, interviewed me, you know, like I said, fat, sassy and pregnant. And I was like, I, my daughters can't play outside and yeah. I have 18 acres. You know, we live in the country and it's not fair. And so they were but able wait, to move. I thought you lived in the safe state of Jefferson. Uh, yeah. Well, there's still, there's, there's guys who I'm come just going to keep calling you on it, girl. <laughs> I'm going to keep calling you on it until you pick up. I know. I, I you know. know. Kids and family. But, but the yeah. thing is, is that 
there still are some of those people who will yeah. come in. They come in because we have great weather. And, um, you know, they're copping a squat there and they walked over on my property. Literally. And I, yeah, yeah, literally. We had 80 tons of garbage removed, seven trailers. Um, I can't even tell you how many tons of tires. I think it was like 25 tons of tires. And I had it, our local PD, who was amazing, mm -hmm. came in. Um, volunteers Basically, came in. Basically, she had a landfill in her backyard. Right behind my property yeah, line. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and so they got it all removed, and, and so it's been awesome. But my point is that people want to be able to defend <coughs> themselves. And if we, it is our right. And, you know, I sat through the leadership forum yesterday and listened to all of these political speakers who believe so firmly in the Second Amendment. And that's the one thing I love about the NRA annual meetings. These people are just strong advocates for what we believe in. Yeah. And we need more people to stand up and we need more of this right yeah. here. And mm -hmm. it's it's incredible. It's been really awesome just to hear all of the um, all of the people in the politics that are speaking out and just really finally standing up for our Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I love Wyoming, although it's really windy, so nobody wants to move there, please. Um, <laughs> um, the, the, big, the big thing for, well, this winter's been brutal, um, but the big thing for me, what made me want to move there um, was Second Amendment Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. They were doing that before it was cool, right? right? Like, that wasn't even a thing when Wyoming enshrined that in their state constitution. It wasn't a thing. This, they're like, this is just fundamental to the people that live here as residents. Uh, constitutional carry. Yeah. Huge. So, you know, that, like, even my husband, who, <clears throat> when we first moved there, was European. He's like, I can have a firearm. Like, right. constitutional carry, you can carry it. You know, you have the right. Although, he's not technically protected by the Constitution, so we weren't really sure how that works. Um, so, he did, he's not a carrier anyway. Um, but constitutional carry, and then... Um, the constitu uh, state constitution protected right to hunt and fish. Well, and here's the, and that's amazing. But here's the thing. We, I, I felt it more just seeing the crime that has increased all across yeah. America. Um, I think it started a lot during COVID and you saw so many people, I mean like 10 million new yeah. gun owners, people who were in the middle and weren't sure they decided to buy a gun yeah. because of the unrest. Yeah. And, you know, now it has settled down. But what people have to remember is that we we need to be able to protect yeah. ourselves. It's yeah. important. When I have a 45-minute response time yeah. to my home, yeah. I'm, I have to be my own first defender. And yeah. I have to be the one to defend my children if I needed to. And I hope mm -hmm. I never have to. Yeah, oh, yeah. God for heaven forbid. Well, I'm, I, we feel lucky that Yogi now, now that has went through this huge immigration process, it's taken literally years. Um, he now has a social security card. He now has a green card. That's awesome. He can now, you know, go and acquire a firearm. And if he chose to carry, he can. Right. Um, he doesn't. I mean, but it's not for everybody. And that's okay, right. too. He likes to hunt. He doesn't want to carry. I don't care. I carry on our farm the mm -hmm. LCR because I mean, it's in a 38 and I can put birdshot in it. And yep. we have rattlesnakes. Um, so, I mean, like in Wyoming, I don't carry necessarily, I mean, it, things can happen to you anywhere, but I carry for many reasons. It's not just for, you know, personal protection from people, but I, I mean, I'm carrying now a lot for rattlesnakes because I don't want to be bit by one of those things, you know. So, that's the nice thing is Ruger makes a firearm that works for pretty much every you Well, know, the LCR you know. is an awesome carry gun it's a too. great carry mm -hmm. gun it's you know and i have you can um, drop it in the mud and pick it up and shoot it yeah well and i've got a belly band and um i just throw that on in the summer mm -hmm. and it's easy for me to conceal below my chest and um and i have it on me all the time so yep. if i go step on a snake tail you know i'm like right I, it's terrifying mm -hmm. like when when my little dog was alive um we were out at the property it was last summer and she's running around, living her best life. She's nine pounds. Right. And mm. she's running through the grass and just la, 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 happy little dog. And, you know, 15 minutes after I pick her up and put her in the car because we were moving mules, we we roll out a three and a half foot rattlesnake. And I'm like, okay, little dog, you have lost your tiny privileges for right. walking around. And um, I was terrified for her because there's big things out there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I... You know, that's made me a carrier in that for that because I'm, I'm terrified of them. But it makes sense. I mean, yeah. even as a hunter, accessing our rifle 
if we had a close encounter mm-hmm. with some type of predator coming after us would not yeah. be as easy. No. Plus, most of us have scopes, right? Unless you're carrying lever action marlin. Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's close range. Yeah. And so it makes sense to be able to carry even yeah. in that situation, yeah. protect yourself from an animal. Yeah. Well, I, the snake thing is like... Yeah. Like a le- legitimate daily fear. We get right? bad ra- rattlesnakes. Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm talking about. It's mm-hmm. like, this is a legitimate, like, daily fear for me. So I'm like, and, and that works great. But, um, you know, shooting for Ruger, being a part of the Ruger family, there's a firearm for so many applications. Like, you've done big game hunting mm-hmm. all over the world. Right. You are no stranger to the Ruger 375. Um, and you've taken a lot of big game animals with it, as have I. Yes. Um, and, and they make... They make firearms from, you know, the biggest, most dangerous game to, you know, packing a snake gun around. Right. It. Like, you know, for, for rattlesnakes, like whatever, whatever you need in between plinking, fun, competitive shooting. It's, totally. it's a good time. We just actually spent a week, was it five days at Gunsight in Arizona training so together? We did three days of training. Um, yes. So we had my media event, which was incredible. So It girls, was incredible, yes. I must say. So anyone who doesn't know, I own a company called Girls With Guns Clothing, and um, we make awesome women's gear. So we started with casual t-shirts and hats. Then we moved into the hunting apparel, which, and we still make all of this. And um, we have our own camo line. We also then went into range pants, which is the carbine. They won the NRA Golden Bullseye Award yeah. in 2020. And now we make concealed carry wear for the past four years. So we have leggings, jackets, vests, um, sweatshirts, all kinds of different gear that you can carry in. And yeah. of course, today I'm wearing one of our pairs. I'm yeah. just plain black. Yesterday mm-hmm. I was wearing the Moto. And we have seven different colorways. And what I really love is that I wear leggings every day, anyways. Me too. <laughs> so I just pull on Sweat a new pants color. Are life. <laughs> they are life. I'm comfortable. I can dress them up like yeah. I'm doing today by wearing cute boots and my jacket. And then you wear the same pair to the gym. Right. I can wear them to the gym and carry my gun. (laughs) I can wear them to the grocery store. I wear them at home. I can tell you the disadvantage of her leggings. Okay. I also like to call them the grow as you go pants. Oh, no. (laughs) So as I put on some weight in life, I don't really notice it because my pants grow as I go. I don't (laughs) notice them getting dyed. Okay. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, I just. That's awesome. Like, no, I'm just joking. They're great pants. Um, and, And so they do have a built in. Um, soft holster yes in so the pants and they're ambidextrous so you mm-hmm. they you sh- Jen is building them so if you're a right or left-handed shooter mm-hmm. you can use them right you have a retention strap you have a trigger guard protection <coughs> we have additional pockets on the side um, right now we have a 7 eighths length mm-hmm. and one and of the what thing- that means it's trendy Yes. And what that means, it's just a little bit shorter. So it's not that, that full length long yes. pants. It's so just us shorties. a little shorter. So people like me really like it. And then the girls that are tall really like it also because it gives a little calf exposure, ankle mm, exposure. Ankle. Ankle exposure. Super yeah. cute. Yes. So super it's a trend. Cute. So those of you that aren't in the fashion world, that's that was my translation from Gunside. I learned that. I hope that the trend stays because I like it much better because mm-hmm. I'm short. So they look like normal length on me um, and you. But, you know, one of the things that I love is that as we're building gear, we have events like we did at yeah. Gunsight. This was our first. Gunsight is incredible. If you have not been there, you should schedule a You're rocking the there. pin. I am. I saw Ken Campbell. So Ken's the CEO. He We came over earlier and we did a Facebook Live. Um, you can check at them out on uh, Facebook or Instagram, Gunsight Academy, and um, the Raven. If you are a Gunsight graduate, you know. I saw a guy in here earlier, and I saw a Raven. I'm like, hey, what classes did you take? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I took the 250 and the 350. And so, you know, yes. it's like, it's what like did a, you it's take? It's like a sisterhood, it's a brotherhood. Yeah. yeah, it's a club. Yeah. It's a club. It's mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like the cool kids club, I think. <laughs> so I've, no, I'm a three-time okay. graduate. Kind of a and <laughs> oh, sure. Rub it in. I've been once. And Jen's like, I've been three times. <laughs> but it's been really cool. I went with Ruger my first time 11 years ago. And then I went five years ago um, with Armed Women of America, yeah. became an, a pistol instructor then. And then I um, just did my own event. And like I say, what we created was a really unique opportunity to to learn from our leggings and yeah. from our jackets. And we partnered with companies like Crossbreed Holsters. We had modular holsters um, because what I do is create a product with a pocket. Yes. So it has a concealed carry pocket. It has Velcro. And then you put your holster in there because you, 
reach, you draw differently than I yeah. do. So it has to be adjustable. But we don't make holsters. We make clothing. So yeah. you find a company. We were using sticky holsters. Yes. Those, those were things awesome. Those are badass. Yeah. I, we use those I'd in the I'd never used one before. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, if you guys haven't used a sticky holster, they stick to everything. Like you literally just slip it in your pants and you can draw from that holster. Like we were practicing. Yep. Drawing from the holster with the sticky holster in the GWG leggings. And they, the sticky holster does not move. It's amazing. Well, and I was just over there at their booth um, chatting with them, thanking them for sponsoring our <coughs> event. And um, Mike gave me the, it's called the Guard Her instead of a garter, guard her, and it goes around, and you can adjust any which way with that material okay. on it. And so I was had a blue gun, and I was, I was just, like, trying the draw. It was awesome. So when we wear a dress, we're not reaching, you know, pulling our dress up all the way. Flashing. Yes. Yeah. So it's just kind uh-huh. of a quick. Different option. Yes, different options. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing is that I, I know for a fact that these leggings – aren't going to work in every situation. Number one, I don't wear leggings after about May 1st. It's too hot. I do. So I do. I wear them year-round because I'm white. And nobody wants to see my white legs. Okay? <laughs> I am super tan in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Jen's like, let me show you my little booty shorts. And my husband's like, oh, my gosh, put shorts on. You're so white. You need to tan those things. And I'm like, no, I'm a vampire. No, I am Sorry, always. Anyway, way off track there. <laughs> That's okay. I'm always. We're always outside doing chores. Yeah. So Olivia is typically in the front yard. Olivia is my four-year. She's in the front yard, usually bare butt. Who knows now? She's getting older. She may not be. She beat on my porch one time, okay? Let's just put it that way. (laughs) She's always naked. (laughs) She is. (laughs) Now she's getting older, so she's kind of knowing, like, well. Well, Maybe I should put clothes on. Yeah. But we have Chloe, who's 10 months old, coming up. So we'll have a little. We're going to have the same thing all over again. So what you're saying is you don't really wear leggings in the summer, so you have to find another (laughs) option. So what what I thought was really cool was, like, let's say I how often do I wear dresses? Not very often. In the summertime, I do like a cute summer dress. Or if I go to a wedding, again, I don't leave my house without my firearm. So I thought, man, that's a really great option because same thing. I can adjust it anywhere because I'm different than you. And -and so-and-so is different because we're all different shapes Mm -hmm. and sizes. And so as much as I make awesome concealed carry wear there, you have to have multiple holsters. I have a drawer. You pull it out. It's about this deep, and it's just full. It's full of belly bands, holsters, different companies, yeah. um, different firearms, and that's what you have to do. Yeah. I have I, five, five firearms on my yeah. permit. Well, and the thing is, too, well, that's in California because you can only have so many, okay? When you come to Listen Wyoming, to <laughs> when you go to Wyoming, you can carry, okay, whatever, whatever you, you want. want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to stress about these things. Okay, California. The Street of Jefferson. Anyway, <laughs> no. Um, so one of the things I, I have really discovered, I love the belly band. And mm-hmm. Allen Company actually has a belly band holster that is kind of universal. And then I've also invested in some Kydex versions. Mm-hmm. So my LCP2. Yes. Um, I love carrying that pistol because it's chambered in 380. And, mm-hmm. But then also they have it in a 22 now with the light rack slide. So I can train with it, mm-hmm. and then I carry with my 380. So it's really awesome. Then it's really cheap to train with too, because it's 22, versus spending that round count on the 380. Mm. So and and so investing in okay, try something you know in an inexpensive option like an yeah. Allen holster. Uh, see if you like it, and then make that investment and maybe upgrade to some Kydex. Different some people ones. don't like Kydex. Some people love it. It's love or hate, whatever. Mm-hmm. I've got some flashbang holsters that are in Kydex, mm-hmm. um, and I really like those because again for that LCP2. It fits right under the girls. Nobody can tell right. I got it. It's super easy to conceal. And that's what I do. That's actually what I do with my belly band. But again, I'm so hot blooded that I can Sweat. only. I do. So I can only wear the belly bands in the winter time. And plus, I'm usually wearing looser clothes in the winter mm-hmm. time. And I do. I don't wear it down here. I don't need any help being whiter <laughs> down here. I, I put it all the way yeah, up, uh, right underneath. Too. Yeah. And it's just kind of a practice with your draw mm-hmm. and, you know, slightly different. Always carrying an extra mag, too. And um, so most of the belly bands will have a little slot for that. That's one thing I also like about Ruger is they make blue guns um, in their different formats for pistols. So you can actually get a holster and practice drawing with your blue gun mm-hmm. even. Um, I have one. Unless you want to practice with snap caps with your with your regular firearm as well. You can. I'm not saying you can't. But it's also nice to, to have that option of practicing with a blue gun. Um, 
and testing out some gear, right. you know, see what's going to fit for you, what, what works for you. And then practicing so that important. drawing, like how far do I have to pull my shirt out before I come up? Mm -hmm. um, what do I need to think about clearing? How fast do I want to push my jacket back? Mm -hmm. Some people put keys in a pocket to weight it, but then you kind of have some recoil of the right. keys. But, so there's Everybody's all kinds of, different. there's so many things to think about and you really don't know until you get to the range and practice, which is why we went to gun site. Mm -hmm. um, we went down there so that we could take Jen's clothes and use them in a functional and practical matter. Like, um, you know, one of your methods for holstering your loaded firearm with the leggings is to do it from the sitting position. Yes. Um, we learned. We and, couldn't and do that there. <coughs> Take my pants down. Well, we could have, <laughs> but um, I don't wear underwear. So <laughs> I don't think anybody would have appreciated that. <laughs> <I just> snorted. <laughs> Fact. That was great. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so anyway, TMI on the old underwear thing. Sorry about that. But um, so you, you uh, teach a technique where you actually... Um, holster the firearm that when it's loaded from the sitting position mm -hmm. before the pants are actually yeah pulled so what we do is and it's it kind of helps also for a lot of bathroom. women bathroom so we've we've dealt with that before and i and i taught it in a class at arm women of america like three years ago Oh, i watched it yes i got photos and the ladies were i i wore Mind shorts blown. underneath they were and so, because they were like, oh, how do I keep it? So the one of the biggest things is when you pull down or you're pulling up, either way, you're seated and your pants come to here. Your you, knees need to be wider than yes. your shoulders. So you're going to tighten. And then what you're I doing. I wish you guys could see this angle right now. Oh, yeah. They probably can't <laughs> see. Is you're going to take your firearm and you're going to point it at an angle that is not covering you or anything else. It's Correct. pointed at the ground. So it's not pointed at my body. And it you just put it into your holster. And um, then you then put on you your retention your strap, pull your pants up. Same thing with the bathroom. Um, when I first, when we first started making <coughs> these, we it was kind of like I would go to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, this is awkward. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, you just spread your legs <laughs> wider than shoulder width. Yes. And when you do that, the tightness just keeps your gun secure. And yeah. it's not an issue anymore. Yeah. And so we were in class at Armwind of America. Yeah. And this lady, she she was the one who asked the question. She was wearing our leggings. And I was like, oh, well, actually, I'm going to demonstrate that. I showed her. She comes back from the bathroom. And she's like, I did it. It was so cool. <laughs> she's like, it worked. So, you know, those are the cool things. But because of that, we did use the sticky holster there yeah. because we were in live fire. We were going in and out yes. consistently. So it was really important that we had a holster we didn't want and everyone was at a different yeah. level so we had competitive shooters we had people who were instructors we had yeah. people who were new shooters so we went through and just protected everyone mm -hmm. in that way and well and i don't know how well you could jog in those leggings with a sticky holster like i, I think you could i don't know i've, I've got to test but this. here's the thing our retention strap with the holster as it is now, uh, this is how I run. Yeah. So I run in these with it. I have no issues. Yeah. And so yeah. you can do, you, but you can do a multitude of different things. Um, <coughs> the one thing I find about a soft holster is that I sweat through it and it will yeah, rust you your like gun. Leather. I, I do. So leather or this is a soft holster that we have on. Your sweat will rust your gun if you don't check it. So like your concealed carry gun, if you, I left it in my holster years ago. I'm talking like 10 years ago before I knew as much as I know now. But I would run in it and I went to fire it because I like to fire my gun once a month. Just check on it. Make sure everything's good. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's rusted. Well, I'd been running. I'd gotten into running that month, which is like never happens. Um, <laughs> so, and you, well, you know, if you don't pull your concealed firearm out and check it, you can have lint in it. It can get dirty. Yeah, it's got, there's all kinds of things that can right. happen. Yeah. So that was one thing. Um, that was one of the reasons I did change to Kydex yeah. for the most part. Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to 
get added benefits like draw odds with Top Rhett that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through Hunting Fool Magazine. And to boot you guys, they've got tons of great specials through partners like Silencer Central where if you're an OnX Elite member, you really benefit from those partnerships. So if you guys aren't a member, I encourage you go online to the OnX Hunt website, use code WILD20 at checkout and you're gonna save 20%. You're gonna love being an OnX Hunt Elite member. And you know what's really cool about Ruger? Maggie and I were talking today. <clears throat> Maggie's a shooter for Team Ruger. Uh, Ruger has some really great videos online talking mm -hmm. about cleaning and care for your firearm and also um, how to disassemble them and mm -hmm. reassemble them in like super instructional, like helpful right. videos. So when you are, you know, maybe a novice firearm owner and you want to know how to disassemble a firearm and put it back together like <clears throat> you and I discovered the 1911 can be quite a challenging yep. firearm to assemble or disassemble um, so those videos are really great so if you guys are wanting like some advice like oh man I didn't think about that I need to clean my gun maybe I need to take my pistol apart and you don't know how to if you have a Ruger yeah. go on the Ruger website it'll you know kind of help you through that process and honestly the ma the owner's manuals are awesome to yeah. walk through too if you're really that specific person so I do both um, when I have a new gun I take out my owner's manual and then I usually find a reliable source of a video and um, one of the things that I will say if you are that person Person who hates to like field strip your gun to clean your gun get the LCP series or the LC 380 hands down easiest. easiest I mean I literally that is the gun I use when I teach people how to clean guns and I'm like your guns probably not this easy <laughs> it is the easiest I mean you literally just pop your pin yeah slide comes right off you take it apart and you put it back together yeah. that easily. It takes minutes. So it does. And it's it is the easiest one hands down. So that is an I carry the L C three eighty very often. That mm -hmm. is our California roster. Um, and you just Because the state of Jefferson has <laughs> limited fire. She's firearms. never gonna let me live it down. <laughs> we have we have six new guns coming on the roster. Guess which ones um, I can have in Wyoming. I know all of them. All of them so jealous. I'm trying to get her to move. I don't know. No pressure. No pressure. Except there's pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get Maggie to move to Wyoming uh, too, no. but she's actually considering it on her own without yeah. peer pressure. Well, I would. So my my, if I have to say, my two states of choice, um, Florida, especially with the beaches, or Texas. Those are my two because yeah. I like the warm weather. Yeah. I mean, that's where you're I live. You're a California girl. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. die in Wyoming. Well, you know, not too far. I grew up in the snow, so two and a half hours um, northeast of where I live now. It's you know almost 5,000 feet and elevation. We're in the mountains. Yeah. And it's where my dad still lives, mm -hmm. um, state of Jefferson, Modoc County. So any of you uh, Californians know where Modoc County is. And I mean, it is very remote. Yeah. There is, it's the largest county in California, but there's only 5,000 people in that county. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very small. I grew up with like yeah. 15 rural. people. Rural. Yeah. It's a rural county. Rural. In California. So no, the, um, <clears throat> so we did this gun site event. We learned we how to, I'm going trying off to subject. Have, <laughs> like squirrel. Uh, and I'm sorry, you guys, I'm like clearing my throat and whatnot, but I've been battling this cold for like a week. Um, so I'm still like, eh. uh, although I'm in denial that I really have one, but she I do, is. but I don't. Um, so anyway, um, but we, we did the gun site. We took your clothing. Women learned how mm -hmm. to hol safely holster mm -hmm. a loaded firearm with your pants. Um, we, we practiced, um, drawing, um, with a jacket on. Mm -hmm. So how do we move the jacket, whether we are having to lift the jacket or flip it to the side. Mm -hmm. And so we practice several techniques and it's just like, if you are going to choose to conceal, we cannot stress enough finding a safe place to train, you know, a facility like, like what you do, mm -hmm. um, uh, Northern something firearms Institute, Northern NFI. Yeah. NFI. Okay. Northern firearms instruction. Yeah. Okay. Not Institute, but we're she's all not <laughs> running a hospital. <laughs> it's instruction. Okay. NFI. We're actually all up and down, um, yeah. the state of California. So one of the largest training organizations mm -hmm. in California yeah. and, um, we have 44 different counties yeah. and agencies. So it's yeah. actually really or a awesome. gun site or something similar, you know, g seek out that instruction mm -hmm. and actually practice, you know, 
safely practice um, with the firearms you're going to be ca mm-hmm. carrying if you're going to choose to do that. It's really right. important. Well, one of the things that I do, and I tell all of my students this too, so every day when I get dressed, I clear my firearm, and before leaving my house, I do just a quick practice. So I practice dry fire five minutes a week with my trigger press. But, but she makes sure she designates a downrange location. Always. Ammunition is not present. Firearm is double, triple checked. Shove your pinky in the barrel and make Absolutely. sure there's nothing in there. Physically and Completely you can see unloaded. It. So I do a dry fire, but I also, in the morning, it's just a really quick check. It's, is there anything that's getting in the way? Because here's the thing. If I have a threat coming at me and my firearm is in a location that I haven't practiced with, at least that last training session is in my memory. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's a new location, and I don't normally, I'm just going to say, I don't normally carry in my purse because I don't, but I did have to while I was pregnant. So I had to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, when I was pregnant, I didn't have anywhere to carry comfortably. So um, I started carrying my purse, didn't want to go without my gun. So I had to figure out, oh, okay, and I had to work at it. Yeah. Because it's, it's a little <coughs> awkward for me. Mm -hmm. And um, figuring out what was right, what was the right gun for in there, I chose a revolver. Yeah. Um, because you had less of a chance of a malfunction. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, you don't have a slide to worry about. But just figuring out how to draw from there. Yeah. And taking that... Take five minutes. It could save your life. Yeah. So literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was actually even not even just in that scenario. You know, Maggie was talking about on the competitive shooting side. <clears throat> she does dry fire. You know, she'll do five minutes working on her trigger press, five minutes working on draw, you know, and, and then she'll kind of come up with like a training plan. Mm hmm. That's all dry before she ever goes live fire at the range. Mm -hmm. And I think there, you know, we can't, especially with the price of ammunition. Oh, I know. We can't stress how important it is training at home safely at, and doing that without actually firing. And it can right. really, like you said, save your life or make you a better competitor. Right. You know, Or if, just a better shot, period. Because what happens yeah. is a lot of people get in there and they just want to yank the trigger and yeah. control the gun. And what you learn from dry fire is if you watch your front sight, there's front sight focus. And you can see, and a lot of people... Dip. And so I have them do that. We line up, we dry fire, and I tell them about front sight mm -hmm. focus. How many people know what front sight focus yeah. is? And it's usually two people yeah. in a 15-person mm -hmm. class. And then, you know, they watch their sight. And if their sight dips, it's like, slow down. Yep. Watch your front sight. And then dime nice and drill. Slow. Yes, diamond mm -hmm. washer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all those things are, and Christy and I actually did, did a video, a video on video that. On mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, there's different things that you can do. And... Um, you know, I always like to say I have not arrived yet. I am still training and learning, and I have so yeah. much. You know, you take people like Illing, who was instructing us at Gunsight, who have been doing this for a lifetime. Yeah. And it's so incredible to learn from someone like that and just know that, you know, we're going to get better. For me, when I get under pressure, I don't shoot as well. At home, you know, I'm like driving a hole through my target like this. Yeah. And then as I get under As soon as I add speed. Yeah. I fall apart. Like, I will shoot. Well, we did the one ragged hole drill at front sight. That was good because that was slow. It was slow, and I had literally five shots in one hole. Mm -hmm. I smoked that thing. Mm -hmm. But you put me under time for speed, and I have a really hard time speeding up. Right. And it's and it's probably just about the fact that you are always focused on hunting. And I'm on focusing the road on it being perfect, and, yeah. right? Like, I yep. want it right where I want it to go. Exactly. And so I have to kind of get over that with a pistol. It's a different train of thought, Same. different type of training. Same. Um, but you, you know, so the you kind of took it a shift from being from a hunting family but not hunting to full-fledged hunting literally around Everywhere. the world. To not being a firearms instructor to, to being a firearms instructor and literally, like, training people... All, the, all over. Yeah. And um, every month. Well, and now we're traveling all over the country mm -hmm. training with mm -hmm. AWA, uh, yeah. Armed Women of America. So it's your firearms journey has really, it's you know, took you one evolved. path and it's taken a turn. Yeah. And I, I'm really proud of you, everything that you've mm -hmm. accomplished you. with, with that. Um, so, I mean, talk a little bit about hunting. Like, um, I know just like with shooting a pistol, shooting a rifle is a perishable mm -hmm. skill. But with that said, if you can successfully shoot a pistol... You're a much better rifle shot. <laughs> yeah, and your trigger press translates. <clears throat> yeah. So I did find that out. So a lot for me happened when I became a mom. 
And yeah. we've talked about that before. Um, one of the things that changed was I used to travel 200 plus days a year. Yeah. And I don't want to do that anymore with mm-hmm. my babies. That's at why home. we moved to Wyoming so we right. can hunt close to home. Yes. And so. Not that anybody wants to live there because it's windy. And cold. (laughs) And cold. (laughs) You just don't want anyone to move there. Except you. (laughs) Except me. And Maggie. So we really, the shift came, um, I would say in 2019, in 2018, I was actually in South Africa when I found out I was pregnant Mm -hmm. with Olivia. And I was like. Oh my gosh. And I kept telling everyone, well, nothing. Good job on the send away, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd been trying I for know, a I while. I know, I know, I know. I'm just teasing. But, you know, and I didn't even tell him until we got home because I didn't want to tell him over the phone. I actually called Narissa, FaceTime, and I was a train wreck. And I was like, oh, and she's like, is something wrong. She thought something was wrong. Yeah. But it's just such an emotional thing. And, you know, here I am, almost 40 years old, and I'm thinking, I was just shy of my 39th birthday. And I'm like, this is going, it's not going to change anything. I'm going to be exactly the same. Wrong, wrong. If you say that, you're full of it. because You, you just don't know what yeah. you're talking yeah. about actually is no. what's going on. Because yeah. your children change your life. The second I held her in my arms, my whole life changed. And But I feel like it's, it's changed, but they're part of my journey now. Mm-hmm. So I take them hunting with me. Mm-hmm. Um, they go, went to gun sight with me. I know, like literally, <laughs> Jen's in the back of the classroom at gun sight pumping. <laughs> like she's like, I got a baby at home I'm trying to feed. <laughs> <laughs> but this is mom life, right? Like right. this is this is doing I it I was all. just in this the hotel room pumping yes, right before well, this. Yes, exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah, we... I have a 10-month-old. <clears throat> and when you spill that stuff, it's like oh, tear-worthy. Yes. Um, but, no, but it's part yeah, of my journey. It is part of it. And so, you know, as I've gone through this, what I found was that I wanted to be closer to home. So then fast forward to Olivia's first birthday. On the day after her first birthday, the world shut down. Yeah. Pandemic. And I was like, what? What? What, what happens? Like mm-hmm. everybody stopped. We stopped shows. We stopped traveling. And that was for about two years. Yeah. Um, NRA, we didn't have the annual meetings for mm-hmm. two years. So in that same time, 10 million new gun owners. And I remember Ted from NFI, he came to me and he's like, hey, we really, we could use some more instructors. And so I started instructing locally um, in Red Bluff. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, my classes were just full like that and yeah. and still are yes i would say they still are but it's i'm just not teaching quite as much as i was back then because i am traveling again and two babies and but went through the motions i found out that i loved it yeah i love to teach you love helping people i do and mm-hmm. i and i always wanted to it. teach in some way and i've helped kids for the past 10 years with hunting i'm a hunter ed um instructor i Amen still do that, that. Sister? yeah yeah and, and so, yogi get to go home and teach hunter ed well and that's what i'm doing yeah. this summer i will help um over 200 kids with yeah. hunter education and in sure, california we need Jeez, it we're gonna do one <laughs> class she's like i'm gonna teach 200 <laughs> kids hunter ed okay thank you. well we I'm do the camps yes and i've been doing stuff on on and off and growing in that journey. And my thing is, if we change that next generation, then my kids are going to still grow up yeah. in a California that hunts and fishes, gets outdoors and has firearms. And I know, I know a lot of people think it's a lost cause, but I'm going to keep fighting that good fight. <coughs> no, so, I commend you. I just like to give you a hard time. I know. Time, so. It's okay. You um, can. I know but everybody no, it, does. And things, and you know, like you said, things change when you have kids and it should. Yeah. A hundred percent should change when you have kids. I'm now at home more. I am still doing all the things, GWG. Yeah. I've just kind of taken a step back. I'm home more with the kids. I work from home. I don't travel as much. But my firearms journey has evolved in a really positive way. Um, I still hunt, and I love hunting. I feed my family. But now I also homestead. So I'm a hunter yeah. and gatherer. And so we have taken it to a turn of I have meat chickens. Last time that we did this, I didn't have meat chickens. This yeah. is a new thing for me. She got good. Goats. We, we I don't know goats. what she's getting from the goats. Um, nothing yet because I have males. But what I would love to do is um, like do our own cheese and stuff like that because I have Nigerian dwarfs. Have so, you eaten goat cheese? Yes. Do you like goat cheese? I'm not a huge fan of there's certain ways that you can make it. I like so, feta cheese. Yes. So but there's that certain slimy, things. creamy goat cheese. <laughs> But I want to, well, you know, that. I just want to try it all. Yeah. I think if the pandemic showed us anything, and 
honestly, inflation and the price of food right now, it is that we should be able to provide for ourselves. And that's what I want to teach my girls. I grew up on a ranch and a farm and we had a garden. We were self-sufficient. We had a milk cow. We had cattle. And that's my goal. Did you think about going the milk cow route instead of goats or just get a goat because they're cute? I got them because they're cute. Okay, because that's what I would do too. I was going to judge <laughs> you if you're like, oh no, I only got them for <laughs> no, the cheese. No, I'm like, totally. wait a second. Oh, no. I'd get them because I want to squeeze them. <laughs> oh no. we So Olivia, like they're on the back porch with her yeah. and she's, I just got videos from my nanny and she's like playing with them and loves them. She named, I want to name them Hank and Waylon and she wanted to, she named them apples and peaches. So Well, you're going yeah. with apples and peaches. Right. I think I could even talk my husband into a goat. Yeah, I, actually, two. I think you could. I think I could. If I, yeah. tw- if I twist I mean, enough. okay, they're only three months old. They're this big. And so they're only going to get a little bit bigger and they'll get wider. They'll get lost at my house. I can't do that. Well, you get the goat fence. So we have an electric fence. The problem is peaches is so small. Peaches can slip through. But we have a solar and then they're going to just graze our property. So, and then, I mean, we'll give them treats and all the good stuff. Yeah. We take them on walks. I got them halters. And um, so uh, <laughs> Apple, when I'm like pulling him, he'll just like fall over. She has the funniest <laughs> video. If you guys aren't following her on her social media, you've got to. It's GWG Jen um, on Instagram. And Jen O'Hara at Girls with Guns Clothing. On Facebook. Mm-hmm. And her little goats, like she's leading them. And the one thing just like stiff legs her and like <laughs> lays down. And she's like dragging it. No, literally. She didn't drag it. I'm just kidding. Peter. But uh <laughs> It was, it's the, it's not a fainting goat. It just was like, nope, I'm giving out. Yep. Well, <laughs> as long as um, Peaches was in front of Apple, we did okay. And yes, everything in my daughter's life is a food. I, so today when we were FaceTiming, Olivia showed me, she goes, I'm a mommy now. She's really missing me. And so she had her baby doll and she goes, this is Sally. And um, she goes, and this is my puppy. And I go, what's your puppy's name? And she goes, strawberry <laughs> I'm like, okay we're gardening <laughs> yes. so we're gonna think about lots of fruit names yes that's okay though but you're yeah. doing such a great job and you guys have chickens so oh, yeah you're, you're we have laying chickens um yeah. we have i know you said the meat 40. chickens but like literally like you make getting eggs every yes. day and that's like livia's little job oh, is, it is going and getting the eggs yeah. and well we were selling eggs and then um i put over a thousand dollars into her college fund she would gather them she puts them in the boxes and she helps me and just family would buy them from us. Yeah. But instead of that, because this year um, it was such a cold winter, we ended up buying eggs and I'm like, no, not okay with this. Yeah. So I'm actually going to do water glassing. So a lot of my little homesteading stuff is kind of fun. It's part of my journey. So yes, firearms, but also, I don't know. I try to do everything. My Wait, husband. what is water glassing? So water glassing is, is like egg and vinegar or something. So it's actually lime. So oh, it's like a pickling lime okay. and then you can use them for up to a year. Yeah, because it so, plugs the pores. Right. And so you don't wash the bloom off. So our, our eggs sit bloom on the counter. Bloom is the poop, right? No, <laughs> no. The bloom is the bloom is like a natural thing that comes out with the egg, and it protects the egg. When you ha- have your own chickens, you don't have to refrigerate your eggs. So they can just sit on the counter. Mine always do. Okay. Be- so that's why you so see you, that in other you, countries. If you wash them, though. Then they have to go in the fridge, and they're okay. only good for three weeks. How, you know how long I leave my eggs in the fridge for? Well... I mean, hey, <laughs> my husband's still alive. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah. like, I always thought m- months, you know. But when you say don't wash the bloom off, that also means don't wash the poop. Well, so the ones that are poopy, I wash and put in the fridge. The ones that are not poopy, then we keep those on the counter. I'm glad we had this clarifying okay. conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I clearly don't have chickens, although I'm not opposed to but it. But we have 40. Okay, but listen to this family. So I eat two and a half eggs a day. I eat two whole eggs, one egg white. My husband eats three eggs a day. Olivia eats one and Chloe eats one every single day. We don't do cereal. Can you add that up for me, please? Because my mental math is a little <laughs> off kilter here. So that's uh, six, eight eggs a day. Eight eggs so a day. So we have 40 chickens. Yeah. And then, like I say, I'm not going to buy them again, so we're water glassing. Wow. Eight eggs a day. Yeah. That's a lot of eggs. I know. And then we're doing the meat chickens. We're going to, this will be our first time. That'll be fun. And she put, you put them in, what is that thing called you put them in? The that you slit their throat in? Oh, just a cone. <laughs> I'm like, uh. so, so we put them in a cone. I always imagine you if you're throat. harvesting a meat chicken that you chop their head off and then they run around the yard. Because that's well, that like can a thing. Happen. That's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. 
This but you is can not, put them in a cone. There is an alternative to that. Yes. And then you slit their throat and then and they bleed out. And it takes the blood out of the meat. Yeah. And then, um, so how hard is it to like clean the chicken? I mean, I imagine feathers going everywhere and it's I'm, just a I'm mess. I'm going to find out. This is going to be my first one. Like, you I don't mean, know I've yet. done pheasants, I've done all those things. Yeah. So this is going to be my first. Yes. And Hello, beautiful ladies. We have the beautiful first lady of Indiana, Miss Janet Holcomb here, and Hi. Renee Thornton. <laughs> Her husband is the president of the Wild Sheep Foundation, both incredible women. And they're at the Ruger booth right now. We love you guys. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. And we're back. And we're back. We had a little uh, intermission there for a un momento when the first lady <laughs> came because we love her and she's amazing. First lady of Indiana. What lucky That's people. Awesome. This is what happens, Jen, when you live in a great state. <laughs> she's with never going to Great leadership let me live it down. <laughs> because I can guarantee you Gavin Newsom oh. is never coming to an NRA event. No. <laughs> and he'll never be in California. Never. But um, uh, the first lady of Indiana, Ms. Janet Holcomb, was here. Her husband's Eric Holcomb. He's the governor here. And she has really, like, she has done so much incredible stuff for Second Amendment, Camp Atterbury, all the NRA, um, a lot of the NRA uh, competitions are held there now. And awesome. she's been on an elk hunt with me. Anyway, so we got derailed. Jen was talking about meat chickens. Yeah. Um, well, moving away from that. Moving away from uh, meat. Wait, no more, no more. We're talking more about details. homestay meat chickens. But it is fascinating to me, this whole yeah. process. She's going to figure out how hard they are to clean. She will report back to us. Yes. So we can decide if we want to pickle eggs. What is it called again? <laughs> Water glassing. Water glass the eggs and then use hey, them. For, it's yeah. super cool. We what what I think started all this was we I were love, talking not about being my fire I journey. really think this is. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm fascinated. I'm not being condescending, well, but hey, yeah. hunting hunting is all part of that. Yes. It's part of that homesteading yes. and stuff. So love to feed my feed my family. Yes. I it know, is. isn't it weird? But food becomes like a really primary when you have things that happen like inflation, pandemic, and all those things. So it, it's been a primary but in hunger. my head. Yeah. <laughs> kind hunger. of a big deal. Yeah, kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but kind of reining things back in, you know, we'll kind of try to close this out, get back on topic. Um, I have no idea what to talk about now. My brain went from like full-fledged <laughs> engulfed in meat chickens to I, I have no idea what to say now. I know. Well... What I would like to say is I love all the things that we're doing. Um, Christy and I are going to be working together this next year. Um, we're planning an event yeah. that is going to be open uh, for people to come where it's, it's going to be a training event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been really awesome. Um, you know, I've had a lot of changes in the last year with Narissa not traveling with yeah. me anymore. And you and I have just kind of like shoulder to shoulder, like, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. And we love yes. some of the same things. And we have different talents um, that I think are really unique and that we're going to be able to pass on to people who want to come and train with us. Yeah. We're really excited about that. We're going to mm -hmm. have people at our my home in Wyoming or possibly somewhere else. We're not really 100% yeah. sure. Can I replicate what we did with Gunsight. It's mm -hmm. such a great facility. We might end up just going back there. Who knows? Right. We don't know yet. The sky's the limit. But we want to do some stuff with rifle and pistol. Right. And um, that's the great thing is um, we have the ability with Ruger Firearms and now with Ruger Made Marlins. Man, we got it all. We got the levers. Right. We got the wheels. I know. 
we you know, the, we're oh, so lucky. We got the semis. So fun. So we are very fortunate. We're very blessed to work with such a great company. We're blessed to be here in our annual meetings mm-hmm. supporting our Second Amendment. Which, yes, um, always. Is so important. Um, it is. And being here and being present. And um, I appreciate your time. How can people follow you? Because obviously they want to see your goats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So personally on Instagram, I'm at GWG Jen. On Facebook, it's Jen O'Hara Girls with Guns Clothing. Now, if you want to follow Girls with Guns, our clothing line then you can follow me at girls with guns clothing on instagram or girls with guns clothing i know gwg clothing on facebook but you know what we um, also forgot to mention she also has a tv show oh yeah well like, there's that she has a tv show girls also. with guns tv girls with guns tv and it airs on carbon, carbon. tv mm-hmm. so you guys can tune yes. in you know um and we encourage you uh like subscribe this podcast share it with your friends yes. share her pages with your friends if you like what we're doing and you want to be part of our journey We really welcome that opportunity and we want to thank you all for like always taking the time to be a part of this and Mm -hmm. and bring kind of our stories to you. Hopefully we've inspired some of you. Maybe you're going to start um, watering chick. What is it called again? (laughs) Water glassing. Water glassing chickens. I don't, the eggs, not the actual chicken. Sorry. Uh, Who knows? Maybe you're not inspired at all and you... You'll tell your friends not to listen. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to go 50-50 at this point. But uh, we appreciate you all for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Uh, Dave Ramsey always says this. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So if you don't like us, don't give us a review. But if you like the podcast, I (laughs) ask you to give a five-star review, like, share, all of those good things. And thank you, guys. Um, And I want to invite you all to watch our new show. We've got Our Wild Life with Mm, a W-Y. So cool. That's airing on Carbon TV, Facebook, and YouTube. So you guys can can kind of follow along me and Yogi's quote unquote homestead journey, although I'm not um, water glassing chicken eggs yet. So don't worry, I'm going to help it. you. I got it. I'm yes. going to do it one of these days. I just got to get some chickens now. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.